Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I talk a lot about cars on this channel and also about odometers from time to time because cars have odometers on them. And there are laws involving odometers. And everyone knows that if you sell a car, the mileage often comes into play as how much that vehicle is worth. And so sometimes unscrupulous people will see to it that the odometer displays a number lower than it ought to in an attempt to get more money for their vehicle. So there are laws regarding this, state laws and federal laws. And um, it's not something you're supposed to do. That is roll the odometer back. And rolling the odometer back, of course, is a euphemism because nowadays most odometers are digital. You don't roll them anywhere. You simply uh, make it so they show a lower number. But, but, big story out of Las Vegas, sent me by a lot of people. Las Vegas man sues FedEx over used delivery trucks with replaced odometers. KTNV Las Vegas, ABC 13, uh, ran the story, sent to me by a whole bunch of people. Darcy Spears wrote this article, and the allegation is that there were nearly 100 vehicles sold, former FedEx vehicles, delivery trucks, and that the actual mileage was not the mileage displayed on the odometers. The allegations in the lawsuit, filed by a Las Vegas man, says that one of the biggest delivery companies in America is reselling its trucks without disclosing the true mileage on some of the vehicles, and that's raising questions. Now, of course, FedEx has an explanation, which we'll get to in a second, but then the question becomes, is this happening? Who's doing it? And, and what are the laws on this? This matters to you because we are living in a home delivery world, according to ABC 13. These trucks are converted and used in lots of different ways after their life with FedEx, and if some trucks driving on your streets and your neighborhood are not as reliable as you're supposed to be, that could be a problem. So 13 Investigates spoke to the man behind the lawsuit, whose name is Tom Layton. He says, what brought us here today is I'm a commercial truck dealer. He's based out of Henderson and buys and sells trucks and has been doing that for 36 years. He buys and sells trucks. Over the last several years, I've noticed that some of the commercial trucks that have been going through my dealership had issues with the odometers. But he told the news station. He made the discovery in March 2017 when he sold a uh, Freightliner delivery truck to a FedEx contractor in Washington State. About a month after the sale, the FedEx contractor contacted me and said, hey, what are you trying to pull here? And I said, what's wrong? And he said, I took this into Freightliner and had the vehicle hooked up to the computer. And it has over 400,000 miles on it, but the odometer says 180. And that's something that many people don't realize is that the mileage is stored oftentimes in other places besides just that display on the, on the panel. In fact, if the vehicle's got a digital odometer, that number is stored someplace else and is simply being displayed up there. In the old days, there were actually tumblers, little, little dials that had the numbers, you know, zero through nine, right? And, and as the number rolled over, when it, you know, got to one and clicked over, it would then cause the next one to click over also. So simply resetting those dials was all that needed to be done. Nowadays, with the information stored elsewhere on the vehicle, it's not enough just to reset one thing or replace one thing. It's often held someplace else. So Leighton bought the truck back and tried to figure out why the readings didn't match up. And he said, and through our research, we found out the odometer was changed by FedEx, not by any car dealership. And when they asked him, how'd you learn that? He said, by comparing the odometer. Leighton says the truck didn't have the original analog odometer that comes from the factory in that particular truck. It appeared the odometer had been replaced. Now, keep in mind that replacing an odometer is not necessarily illegal in and of itself. But according to federal law and most state laws, if you replace the odometer, you've got to notify the person you sell the vehicle to that the odometer has been replaced. But generally speaking, what happens is people have a broken odometer. They don't know what the mileage is because it broke a while ago. So they take out the broken one. They put in one that reads all zeros. And then legally, if they follow the law, they put a sticker in the door jam that says odometer was replaced at so many miles because it's broken. And we started over at zero to put somebody on notice that it's got a new odometer. So... Um, the TV station says, we've learned there are two big tells that an odometer has been replaced. For starters, um, the bolts that hold the new odometer in uh, are not the same as the ones that hold in the old one. And of course, it's digital when that truck came with a, an analog odometer. Um, so that is how they tell on this one. Now, Leighton filed his lawsuit in federal court in 2017, 
And um, that's after he looked at the details of hundreds of former FedEx trucks he'd bought. He alleges in his lawsuit that FedEx and its agents failed to disclose the actual miles of some of the former FedEx trucks that he bought at auctions. In court records, he alleges that he dealt with 400 or 500 vehicles and as many as 100 of them, 96 to 100 of them, had their odometers replaced. And he says that that's also based on information he's discovered during the legal process. Now, FedEx denies the allegations, claiming they have no involvement in the sale process and a third-party company is contracted to do it. In court records, FedEx says that that third-party company purchases the vehicles from FedEx, takes title of the vehicle, and has it delivered to auction, which, again, very well could be true. Who's changed the odometer, though? That's the question. Now, the third party is not named as a defendant in the lawsuit, but, again, Channel 13 wants you to know, replacing an odometer is not a crime by itself. There are legitimate reasons to do so, and it's not unreasonable, according to FedEx, given the rigorous daily demands on their vehicles. But federal law says the new odometer should be set with the vehicle's actual miles, and it has to be disclosed with a sticker to the door jam. If the actual miles are unknown, that needs to be documented as well. Uh, and, of course, Leighton says those steps are not happening. He said they're replacing the odometer with one starting at zero and then running another 100 to 150 to 180, you know, 180,000 miles, and then selling it. And so that's why it doesn't make much sense if just you think about this logically, that the company has a vehicle and they sell it to somebody to, to dispose of it and then it gets to an auction with, with 100,000 miles on the new odometer. Well, who put those miles on? So it sounds like you'd, you'd think that the odometer had been replaced while it was still in use and then the vehicle got sold. So, by the way, I've been practicing on it for 30 years. I don't think I've ever seen a car that had the odometer replaced properly with the door jam sticker. Never seen it. I've seen a lot of vehicles with rolled back odometers. That happens all the time, still happens. Uh, and the funny thing is, whenever I talk about this, I always get one or two people go, oh, Steve, uh, that doesn't happen anymore. Uh, in the old days, maybe, but not anymore. Not anymore. Um, it happens. I get phone calls about it all the time. And in fact, it's gotten easier to do with stuff you can buy on the internet and eBay and stuff like that. There's, there's, there's stuff you can buy to do this. So unfortunately, it's, it's fairly common. So uh, in case you didn't realize this, lower mileage on a vehicle means higher resale value. I'm not as familiar with the commercial truck market as I am with the just retail consumer car market, but I've known car dealers. I actually know a few personally. I've got, I'm friends with car dealers, interestingly enough, but I've also spoken to many others. And a vehicle with unknown mileage versus a vehicle with known mileage. In other words, you've got two cars that are identical in every respect, except one of them, you have to check the box as unknown mileage. Or you're going to say that the odometer has been tampered with. That often slashes the price in half, in half on a personal vehicle, on a typical consumer vehicle. It cuts the price in half. So a vehicle with unknown mileage that you buy for $5,000 if it's known mileage, you can sell it for 10, double your money. So that's the temptation there. Now, the attorney for Leighton says, uh, you're selling a van for twice the amount of money, and that money is percolating up the chain with FedEx ultimately getting the lion's share of it. You know, usually these things all come back to money, to money. Uh, according to the lawsuit, it works like this. FedEx contracts with that fleet management company, which sells the retired trucks through auctions across the country. And FedEx receives any profit from the sale of the vans over and above a set amount paid to the third party. Thus, the greater the sale price, the greater the profit received by FedEx. Now, FedEx argues they're not the ones setting prices or selling the trucks. Well, no one's saying they are, I don't think. An example that the um, uh, Leighton points to uh, in court records is a former FedEx truck with 346,000 miles in the odometer. Uh, well on the truck, but the odometer only shows 86,000. And that was because the odometer had been replaced twice before selling it at auction uh, for a premium price. So the odometer <laughs> had worn out twice or broken twice. And that's also something I've never seen before that I know of. I've seen vehicles that had the odometers replaced. I've seen vehicles that had the odometers spun back. 
I've never seen a vehicle that had the odometer replaced twice. And it makes you wonder, did it, did it break down due to overuse? Is the odometer wearing out? <laughs> so, it's crazy. We've heard of vehicles that have been driven to a million miles. It happens. Vehicles can make it that far. And I've heard of odometers that make it that far also. An odometer is not that complex of a piece of equipment. Okay? So, I mean, you know, a dual-clutch transmission in a Ford Fiesta ain't going to last a million miles. But the odometer in that same car probably would if the car ever made it that far. So um, there are some examples of people who bought these vehicles planning on doing things with them. And uh, one guy, for instance, uh, is a self-employed home builder named Brian Fisher who found a former FedEx truck with 67,000 miles in the odometer. He said, that caught my attention. I wanted a low-mileage vehicle. It cost him about $10,000. But soon, he says the truck was having problems. Uh, a year and a half after I received it, I started questioning the true value of the vehicle for being such a low-mileage vehicle. Um, Leighton, the guy who filed the lawsuit, believes the odometer was replaced on Fisher's truck because it's one of those digital ones. Fisher says no one told him the actual miles. Leighton recently bought the truck from Fisher and is asking FedEx for the maintenance records. So um, Leighton says that after all of this, he started getting kicked out of auctions. So um, their final response was to kick me out of the auctions. After 36 years of being in this business, I've been banned and barred from every auction that sells FedEx trucks. And that ban effectively put him out of business, which is why he is now taking this to court. So uh, we'll see what happens. The lawsuit was filed in 2017. The allegation is that these vehicles are having their odometers replaced and it's not being disclosed to the person who gets the vehicle down the road. Uh, and if that happens, there's a problem there. And like I said, there are laws, state laws and federal laws that address odometers. And if an odometer breaks, you're allowed to replace it. And when you replace it, you're supposed to put something on the vehicle to indicate that the odometer has been replaced. And it should be usually a sticker in the door jam. And if you go on the internet, you can find pictures of what these stickers are supposed to look like. Like I said, seeing one in real life, never have. But I've handled a lot of odometer cases. And 99 times out of 100, the people we catch spinning odometers back just say it didn't happen. They go, I didn't do it. No, I have no idea what you're talking about. And of course, it's very, very difficult to take that argument into court with a straight face when you bought the vehicle with 50,000 miles on it, and now you're selling it with 20. Where'd they go? You know, and, and, and again, in case you didn't know this, um, the Secretary of State or the DMV keeps copies of titles. And every time the title changes hands, you know, new owners, uh, the people who sell the car are supposed to fill in the mileage and it gets signed by both parties and, and a copy that goes to the state. And then the state should have a series of these titles. And assuming the car stayed in one state for its entire life, uh, best example I can give you is in Michigan, there's a department with the Secretary of State's office called Title Lookup. Title Lookup. And you can call them. And if you have a car, you can say, I've got the VIN for a car, the vehicle identification number. Can you give me the title history to this car as you have it? And so if you had a vehicle that was delivered brand new in Michigan and every owner was in Michigan, you could actually get the entire title history from Lansing and it would show you the title that you know came to you the title before that, before that, all, all the way back to the certificate of origin. And that title history would show you the mileage each time it changed hands, who the people were, and so on and so forth. And that, of course, is where Carfax and, and those companies get their information from. Now, the interesting thing is that they, of course, sweep the nation for the title information from all 50 states, and then they correlate it by VIN. So if a vehicle had been delivered in Wisconsin, and somewhere along the line got shipped to Michigan and then titled over in Michigan, you'd have to get the title history from both states. And I've done that before, running around trying to chase down titles from different states and so on. And it can be done. But I've also had it happen where a vehicle changed hands three, four times, all in Michigan. And so I can get these certified titles uh, and histories that show that. So it's a, it's a strange thing to do if you were to do this intentionally. Because not only can you be sued for it, it's a crime. And you don't often hear people going to prison for odometer tampering, but you do occasionally. And it's usually somebody who's doing it on a, on a widespread basis. But I've seen it before. I've seen articles about it. I've, 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 I've watched uh, documentaries about it where some dealership someplace realizes they can go to an auction, buy vehicles that are high mileage, 
roll the odometers back, and sell them for double their value uh, you know, in a retail setting. And they do it a couple of times, they get away with it. Next thing you know, they're doing it a lot. And somebody, somebody, somewhere throws a flag on them and then they wind up you know, in federal court. And so you do hear about that occasionally, but this is a lawsuit, this is a civil action. And that's one of the interesting things about odometer fraud is that arguably, if it happens, it is both a civil action, you can sue them, and a criminal action, they can be prosecuted for. So this right here is a civil action and it's a man suing. He says that FedEx was selling vehicles which had their odometers swapped out and replaced with lower reading odometers. And if that's the case, we'll see what happens. It'll be very interesting. So KTNV Las Vegas, ABC 13 ran it. Darcy Spears wrote it. Uh, and it was sent to me by Tom, Sue, Brick, Courtney, and John. Thanks a lot. Questions or comments, put them below. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. We make the biggest mistakes when we think we have nothing to lose.